Johnny Brook Crowd Destruction. No, 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 it isn't. I'm only joking. Don't hang up. It is me, Ambrose. Governor, do not give me guess who. Guess where is the question? Where the hell have you got to? Yeah, I gathered it is a phone box. Where? He hasn't got a clue. Have you got the six packs I asked you for? There isn't a beer in the house and I'm gumming for one. What the hell is keeping you? All right, post your bleeding letters and get back here immediately. Dear one, dear Nola, thank you very much for your lovely present of a partridge and a pear tree. <laughs> We're getting the hang of feeding the partridge now. Although it was difficult at first to win its confidence, <laughs> it bit the mother rather badly in the hand. But they're good friends now, and we're keeping the pair three indoors in a bucket. Thank you again. Yours affectionately, Governor. Day two. Dear Nola, I cannot tell you how pleased we were to hear from you so soon again. And to receive your lovely present of two turtle doves. You really are too kind. At first, <coughs> The partridge was very jealous and suspicious of the doves, and they had a terrible row on the night the doves arrived. We had to send for the vet, but the birds are okay again, and their stitches is due to come out in a week or two. The vet's bill was eight pound, but the mother is over her annoyance now, and the doves and the partridge are watching the telly from the pear tree as I write. Yours ever, Governor. Day three. Dear Nola, we must be foremost in your thoughts. I had only just posted my letter when the three French hens arrived. <laughs> there was another sort out between the hens and the doves who sided with the partridge, and the vet had to be sent for again. The mother was raging because the vet's bill was £16 this time, but she has almost cooled down. <laughs> However, the fact that the bird's droppings keep falling down in her hair while she's watching the telly doesn't help matters. Thanking you for your kindness, I remain your governor. Day four. Dear Nola, you mustn't have received my last letter when you were sending us the four calling birds. There was pandemonium again in the pear tree last night, and the vet's bill was £32. The mother is on sedation as I write. I know you mean no harm, and remain your close friend, Governor. Day five. Dear Nola, your generosity knows no bounds. Five gold rings. <laughs> when the parcel arrived, I was scared stiff that it might be more birds. <laughs> because the smell in the living room is atrocious. However, I do not want to seem ungrateful for the beautiful rings. Your affectionate friend, Governor. Day six. Nola, what are you trying to do to us? It isn't that we don't appreciate your generosity, but the geese have not alone nearly murdered the calling birds, but they laid their eggs on top of the vet's head from the pear tree, and his bill was 68 pound in cash. My mother is munching 60 grains of allium a day, and talking to herself in a most alarming way. You must keep your feelings for me in check, Governor. Day seven. Nola, we are not amused by your little joke. Seven swans a swimming is a most romantic idea, but not in the bath of a private house. We cannot use the bathroom now because they've gone completely savage and rush the door every time we try to enter. If things go on this way, the mother and I will smell as bad as the living room carpet. Please lay off. It is not fair. Governor. D8. Nola, who the hell do you think gave you the right to send eight hefty maids of milk in here to eat us out of house and home? Their cattle is all over the front lawn and has trampled the hell over the mother's roast bags. The swans invaded the living room in a sneak attack, and the ensuing battle between them and the calling birds, turtle doves, French hens, and partridge made the Battle of the Psalm seem like wonderly wagon. The mother's on a bottle of whiskey a day, as well as the 60 grains of Valium. I'm very annoyed with you, Grobner. Day nine. Listen, you louser. There's enough pandemonium in this place day and night without nine drummers drumming, while the eight maids of milking is beating me poor old alcoholic mother out of her own kitchen and gobbling everything in sight. I'm warning you, you're making an enemy of me, Governor to lunacy. Day ten. Listen, man, your face. I hope you'll be haunted by the strains of the ten pipers piping you sent here to torment us last night. They were aided in their evil work by those maniac drummers, and it wasn't a pleasant sight to look out the window and see eight hefty maids of milk and poor going around to the ensuing punk rock roar. My mother has just finished her third bottle of whiskey on top of 124 grains of allium. You'll get yours. Governor, all alone, I say. Day 11. 
You have scandalized my mother, you dirty Jezebel. It was bad enough to have eight maids of milk and dancing to punk music on the front lawn, but they've now been joined by your friends, the eleven lords of Leaven, and the antics, the whole lot of them, at least the most decadent days of the Roman Empire, looking like outlook. I'll get you yet, you old bag. Day 12. Listen, slurry head. You have ruined our lives. The twelve maidens dancing turned up last night and beat the living daylights out of the eight maids of milking, because they found them carrying on with the eleven lords of Leaven. Meanwhile, the swans got out of the living room where they've been hiding since the big battle and savaged hell over the lords and all the maids. There were eight ambulances here last night and the local civil defence as well. The mother is in a home for the bewildered and I'm sitting here up to me making birds drop and empty whiskey and valium bottles, birds blood and feathers, while the flame and cows eat the leaves off the pear tree. I'm a broken man! Come not all out of sheep!